up, everybody? Welcome to Flagrant Two. Just so everyone knows, you're a psycho. Like, just <laughs> bully the f out of a guy and then be like, all right, here we go. It's a small moment from the very first minute of Shane Gillis's first appearance on Flagrant in October 2021, but the ensuing rivalry between the two makes a lot of sense if Andrew Schultz was clowning Shane hard and then immediately snapped straight into his podcast intro. That's oh, crazy. That's what's going to happen for the next that was, two hours, Shane. That was insane, dude. <laughs> Why else would that be Shane's first comment? It fits with Schultz's overinflated approach of thinking flagrant is worth more than the Joe Rogan experience without getting the same numbers, and it's the kind of fake behavior more and more of his fans are complaining about in the comment sections. It'd be nothing without the rest of the episode, though. At 13 minutes, they cut to a completely unrelated segment of a beef with the MMA hour. Strange choice, but okay. But the choice to cut Shane's interview 40 minutes in... Hey guys, we're fast forwarding this part because it's too boring for your ears. Trust us. But for Andrew to record a voiceover after the podcast and speed up past Shane's parts while subjecting us to every boring minute of the flagrant crew, it's laughably big headed. If anybody's boring in the flagrant Shane Gillis episodes, it's Andrew, Akash, Mark, Alex, and everybody else on the crew that are less mentioned, as again the entire comment section says in as many words. Man, Andrew has fallen so hard into the trap of thinking that being a comedian with a podcast makes him a philosopher. He says so much with absolute confidence. Shane is the only one that seems actually fun to hang out with. My favorite thing about Andrew is when he tells his co-host to tell a story, then ends up cutting them off and telling it himself. Ha <laughs> ha, he's so humble. To then go on and pretend to end the podcast and say Shane isn't being energetic or funny enough, Shane had just done 20, 30 podcasts in a row and still had funnier jokes in that 40 minutes than anything I heard Akash or Andrew say, or without a single loud forced laugh or knee slap. Now you phoned it in. You think I phoned it in? Yeah, I didn't think you had a lot of that energy. <laughs> I was banking on you guys. Or without a single loud forced laugh or knee slap. And the same applies to both of their outputs for most people, and the numbers now reflect as such. Back in 2021, Andrew had the much larger podcast than Shane by every metric, so it's possibly thought it didn't matter how Shane was treated, and little broed him. Skip forward two and a bit years and Shane has lapped flagrant five times over and is the king of Patreon alongside Matt McCusker. Meanwhile, Flagrant's peak was 23,000, now at 15,000 as we covered last video, the lowest Flagrant supporter number in almost four years. And from the limited data out there about Patreon records over time, I can't find any other Patreon that ever reached Matt and Shane's numbers. Not sure if it's a record for sure, but they'll likely hit 100k members soon at this rate, which is just beyond insane. The closest Patreon has 30,000 less members. There are some with similar amounts of earnings around 200 to 300,000 a month, but if Shane and Matt are earning on the upper end of the estimate at 565,000 a month, again, it's a mind-bending blow-up they probably can't comprehend coming from humble backgrounds and a over half a decade grind. People love to see the everyman underdog win, but to many, the secret podcast has the better jokes and dynamic, and that's all it really takes. Flagrant 70k a month is a significant amount still, but Shane and Matt are in their own universe with numbers like that, and pay a lot less staff and studio fees. For a show that started in 2016 and only got its first taste of viral finance in 2022, it's the end result of thousands of hours of consistency, and the show still feels the same to a high majority of their fans, which hasn't been the same for Flagrant. They blew up much quicker, but have been on a steady decline for two years now since the rebranding of bigger sets, longer laughs, renaming to Flagrant to have it be about the whole crew rather than Andrew Schultz as Flagrant, the latter at least a humble, solid move. And it does seem by checking a few of the recent episodes, like Vivek Ramaswamy's appearance, that Flagrant can lax up and let the guests speak if it's someone with status or a UFC fighter, or maybe they are starting to listen to fans with the loss of Patreon support. Vivek is everything Akash's parents hoped for. Back to Shane's first appearance, even at 30 minutes in, Schultz shows the bravado and claims he kicks out the entire section of people that allows heckling to go on, not just the heckler. I'm just staring at them. Yeah. I'm like, eventually they're going to get uncomfortable and they're going to realize they should probably stop talking. Yeah. And the old Hitler. And they just, what is that? Hitler used to do. I'll kick the whole row out. Not only do they have to go, the people around them that enabled that I'll also be honest, have to go. Also very Nazi-like. <laughs> this whole episode is like when relatives find out you do comedy and keep telling you to be funny. An hour and a half in and they're still complaining that Shane gave them a poor performance. I have we a know, lot of that's bugs. why we're so 
fucked off at the first hour of this I podcast. A, I have a lot of fun. God damn the irony. Then Shane digged at a cast for his love of Marvel movies, which they've gotten into pretty much every podcast. If you like uh, all the teenager movies you like, you're going to love this one. <laughs> Do you oh, think he could fly? I didn't know he could fly the whole time. Do you think people think I'm dumber than you? <laughs> it's not about <laughs> that. You're banking on people buying into right now? I bet they know. Yes, Akash. I can't think of a single insightful bit or memorable moment other than his Apu defense or being incredibly mad that one person didn't laugh when the rest of the room was. I think it's pretty clear now that Shane's stand-up, sketch comedy, and podcast appearances are on a completely different level to Akash. So that comment didn't sit well with Flagrant's audience at the time and hasn't aged better either. Five minutes later, Akash admits he only does one impression, while Shane is great at many. Even the Australian accent, which people either love or loathe, but rarely can recreate accurately. Yeah, the guy just can't let Shane finish without criticizing. Yo, f that, like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Does it sound good? Yeah, Go, yeah, keep I going. Think, uh... You said two words. Shut up. You try one. <laughs> <laughs> you do one. You just sit here and criticize, I criticize, I criticize. I they went at it again in the most recent podcast and... I don't like the sense of humor in every one of these. Guns. Deadpool killed <laughs> superhero movies. Did you see, see I wasn't that a big... sense of humor. Yeah, I saw it when it came out. I, was I like, wasn't a big I fan of... like this. I thought, uh, I thought Deadpool was all right. All of this is worse when you go back to the 2019 December Shane Gillis episode. Technically, this was actually his first appearance, but the camera footage corrupted, so it's audio only, reflecting in the view count that comedy fans really do prefer video. Schultz has a completely different energy to the rest of the Shane Gillis episodes and is so much more laid back. Even Akash, too, up until he said, I, I love Louis like jokes like when someone else would tell me them. His ideas are always brilliant, but then watching an hour of his comedy put me to sleep, yo. There's valid reasons not to like Louis, but it's rarely for his comedy. It's hilarious to hear Akash with his bird pitch delivery criticize Louis C.K.'s delivery for being boring. What do you have to lose, yo? Yeah. Patrons? <laughs> True. True. Damn, even more irony now that the tides change. Though Akash said he loves Big Bang Theory, so yeah, he isn't doing himself any favors here. And it's really not that much different for the following Shane Flagrant episodes. Akash and Andrew are still kind of hostile, and Shane nails Schultz by calling out his exaggerated epiphanies or philosophical moments that turned Andrew's comment section almost entirely pro-Shane for every episode. Each Shane appearance will only get weirder if Flagrant continues to lose supporters while he only gets bigger. But to the credit of Louis C.K., he did try to put Andrew in his place. You were raised with a lot I of money. I went to a party school. Yeah, that's my parents, people with money, intelligent people with money go to party schools. How much my have Dude. crazy money? Wow. Isn't that, that true, right? My yeah. parents taught dance lessons for a living. How much money can you make doing that? Schultz leaves out that his family ran it for three decades and sold the business in 2013, so it was at the very least profitable. And Louis' remark about him being an educated guy who plays into the stupid loud comedy persona hits hard. <laughs> I know that you're a lot smarter than you seem. I'm a dumb guy. Yeah, you act like a dumb guy. Because you, know, make, you not... make money acting like a dumb guy. With Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K., or the late legend Norm MacDonald all throwing their support behind Shane 100%, Andrew's animosity towards Shane could be down to not receiving the same backing from his peers. While Shane's first stand-up special landed 24 million views, Andrew's 18 million still didn't lead to a Netflix special like it did for Shane. Andrew's stand-up ability is solid, so the guy can still turn sentiment around in his comment sections and with the peers he's wanting to impress. Simply put, Flagrant just need to tone it down a bit and the negative feedback from fans will probably pass. Focus on a funny, enjoyable to listen to dynamic rather than who can be the loudest or who can slap the most knees and learn from the comment sections a little. And while most comments on the internet should probably be ignored, when the whole comment section is against you, you should probably stop interrupting people and evolve as a show. Until then, the comedian's perceived as the most genuine, real, laid back, whichever word you prefer, or provide the better interview experience, will make millions more a year than other podcasts that are now on multi-year slow declines. And while the Patreon model isn't perfect, this situation is a hell of a lot better than comedy being decided entirely by executives in suits. As Patrice O'Neill said, This business is the beast, yeah. and it eats everybody and sh them out. Now you can lose the much coveted position with the beast and still prosper. This is the last thing we're talking about, and then we're stopping this podcast. Please. <laughs> that was unnecessary. I think you're from where you are from in the world. Where am I from? Like stupid lands, I would call it. <laughs>